the greater use of what is called Earth observation data from space technology could add 100 billion US dollars to Southeast Asia's GDP in five years' time. Now, this from a new report ahead of the Global Space Technology Convention and Exhibition happening in Singapore next week. Now, to share more about the commercial opportunities of space, are Nicola Yeo, Director of Innovation at Singapore Space and Technology, as well as Michelle Ku, co-leader of Deloitte Southeast Asia's Center for the Edge. Welcome, ladies, to both of you. Now, Thank if you, I could yeah. start first with Michelle, satellite tech as a key economic driver for the region. Is that a realistic goal? I mean, where did we get this 100 billion US dollar figure from? Thanks, Jill, for having us on the show. Now, Deloitte estimates that the increased adoption of Earth observation data mm. alone is going to contribute $100 billion to Southeast Asia's GDP from 2023 all the way to 2030. Now, that figure sounds astronomical, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it is actually very achievable mm. because these are all based on use cases companies can adopt mm. today. And in fact, if you think about it today, you don't have to go to space in order to profit from space. Ah. And it's really about how you can draw insights from this rich source of data in space for benefit of companies across almost all industries. All right, sounds optimistic. But Nicola, I'll bring you into the conversation with examples of exactly where satellite technology can be useful, can be used, and how will it ultimately help to reduce costs, which is what we all want. <laughs> Yeah, we are at an exciting point in time mm. where we are mainstreaming space. So if we take a step back, we see space actually as a horizontal technology, just like the internet or robotics. Um, it is no longer confined to just one industry vertical, mm. but it can be applied across a variety of different sectors uh, on Earth. Um, so space essentially is a very powerful source of data. Satellites mm. act as the eye in the sky to take pictures uh, of the Earth to monitor what's happening here on Earth. Um, so so with more satellite data, uh, it allows us to have more actionable insights, more precise data to help businesses make smarter decisions. So I'll give you an example. Yes. Um, in the maritime sector, you know, Singapore is a maritime hub. Uh, satellites are able to monitor what's happening at sea and to track shipping vessels in real time in order to optimise maritime traffic and reduce congestion at ports, thus reducing costs. Um, in the area of disaster monitoring, you know, Southeast Asia has a lot of natural disasters. Um, and satellites are able to analyse weather patterns mm. and tell us whether a natural disaster is about to happen, like a typhoon or a yeah. flood, before it actually happens. So that allows us to have more reaction time to um, have earlier evacuation of disaster sites okay, and then, reduce economic yeah, losses. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you make it very clear for us to visualise that. Uh, mm. Michelle, uh, what would Singapore's share of the pie be? You right. know, uh, because uh, can you share examples of how Singapore is benefiting from commercial space activities that uh, have been described? Definitely. Of course, Singapore as advanced manufacturing, it has done a lot of R&D um, in developing better satellites. But the bigger opportunity mm. is really, if you think of space as a rich resource of data, how do you draw insights from that? Uh, to benefit companies and, like Nicolette said, make yeah. better, smarter decisions. This is where Singapore can really shine because with its AI and technical capabilities, mm. its funding ecosystem to be able to support more startups and business innovation, that is where uh, the Singapore economy is really going to benefit from this. Well, well Nicolette, you, you described uh, industries across the board can benefit, but who do you see as being the first movers into this and who stand to benefit the most? Um, so I think building on what Michelle said, uh, Singapore in particular is able to benefit uh, from the space opportunity in a couple of ways. Yeah. Firstly, we're really strong in artificial intelligence, which allows us to process large amounts of data to make it actionable and usable by the business community. The second is that you know we're very strong in advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, uh, material sciences, which allows us to make better performing satellites and um, create better data. Mm. And the last thing is that we are a financial services hub in the region, in Southeast Asia. And so that allows us to invest in developing more of these space-based services. Okay, so the potential is there, but we also need 
the infrastructure, we need the trellises to, to, to build. So I'm wondering how does Singapore stack up against our regional counterparts, who I'm sure are also very interested. When it comes to the satellite tech capabilities, do we have talent? Do we have the resources down the pipeline uh, to position ourselves really as a regional leader? Mm. Sure. I would say Singapore definitely plays a very important part in the value chain. Mm. And when we think about space, I think we need to look uh, at the Southeast Asian story as a whole. And I think that really shines through when it comes oh, to space okay. because each country has complementary strengths. Right. Of course, we've talked about how Singapore has you know, the AI and tech capabilities. Um, in Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, they are all uh, developing their space launch capabilities. Uh, and of course, Singapore being a base for regional HQs, mm. this is where you can really reap those insights from that. And it'll be easy to convince them to share data and to <laughs> collaborate, hopefully. Well, the, the good news is that Earth Observation <laughs> data is uh, available. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, final everywhere. question, Nicola. If you could um, just tell us what we can expect from this Global Space Technology Convention and Exhibition set to take place next week. I can't afford the ticket. Uh, I'm <laughs> kidding. But I see there's a lot of things that are going to be discussed um, infrastructure, AI, cybersecurity, even policy yes. and regulation. So what can we expect? So the GSTCE is actually where we will be talking about how space can actually benefit non-space sectors. So we're bringing in 10 different uh, diverse industry sectors that have nothing to do with space to come and talk about how space technologies can support yeah. these sectors. Uh, and we'll be driving conversations. We'll be bringing in end users from the maritime industry, from um, urban planning, from financial services to talk about how space can be supporting innovation and business transformation mm. across the board. And what's very exciting is that that, um, you know, in this year's GSTCE, we have a Singapore pavilion of 16 space tech companies from Singapore right. that will be showcasing their innovations from satellite imagery analytics to communications in space. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of uh, developments that will be showcased uh, during this convention. So we're very excited. We're for that. very well yeah. represented then in Singapore. Yeah. And yeah. De Deloitte has been in the space industry for 15 yes. years. Um, and so we're really excited to have a big presence at GSTCE as well. And the good news is CNA will also be covering it. Yes. <laughs> yes, you all did. Well, I've been speaking with Nicolette Yu from Singapore Space and Technology Limited, as well as Michelle Koo from Deloitte Southeast Asia. Thank you, ladies.